goes to your phone. What role does Tucker Carlson play in American politics here on uh, American Issues Take Two on a given Thursday? Uh, we have John Wahey. He is our special guest. Uh, we have my co-host, uh, Tim Abicella, and our regular contributor, Stephanie Stoll-Dalton. Welcome to the show, all you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I have to uh, make a disclosure, a full disclosure. I don't know that much, actually, about, uh, um, about uh, Fox News, because I have a rule uh, that if I'm watching Fox News, I can only watch until the first lie. And at the first <laughs> lie, I turn it off. And I have never gotten, you know, more than like three, <laughs> four minutes in. So I, I don't know what happens after that. But uh, hey, 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 Jay, can I put in a friendly amendment on this? Yeah. Um, I don't call it Fox News. I call it Fox Entertainment for the very reason you just mentioned. Well, entertainment in this case is uh, untruth. Uh, yeah, anyway, is. so right. we've had Roe v. Wade. And uh, it's very clear from a number of articles and opinion pieces and editorial pieces uh, that uh, our civil liberties beyond Roe v. Wade are at risk. And this very special Supreme Court puts them at risk. And you name any number of them, whether they are written into the Constitution or not, uh, they're at risk. And the First Amendment is therefore also at risk. Um, so we should discuss today what Tucker Carlson and Fox News mean. And let's, let's start with you, Tim. Uh, who is Tucker Carlson? And does he have some magic cult-like qualities that make him more, more powerful than ordinary people who put their trousers on one leg at a time? Well, Tucker Carlson's a provocateur, as was Father Coughlin and even uh, Patrick Buchanan. Uh, they're media, you know, darlings, and they become uh, as popular as they become thanks to stoking grievance and specifically white fear. And to further the, the point about white fear is um, the, the new term replacement, white replacement. And that is striking a chord and a note within many, many Americans who feel that they're over a certain age and they're white and they feel like they're being diminished. Their power is being usurped, to use a, a, a Shakespearean term, and they're running scared. And, and like Trump, he plays to that very well and it has put him on the top of cable news as far as popularity ratings. And he's quite good at it. And uh, it's easy, it's easy to bring in audience when you're stoking those fears. And, um, and, and then the more you stoke it, the more popularity you get, the more viewers you get, and of course, the more advertisers that say, I'm willing to put my dollars with this popular show. Um, let's compare though, let's compare what happens on Fox with Tucker Carlson and what happens in the other, you know, national networks, call it the liberal national networks, uh, MSNBC and CNN. Um, I have gotten, by the way, more to watch Shepard Smith uh, and the BBC, because uh, that's the old fashioned style. Um, you know, old fashioned American news, you know, you just, you gave the news and it was a lot of news, um, but you didn't spend the whole day, for example, talking about one story. In the case of uh, Roe v. Wade, we spent the last uh, week talking about one story, and that changes the priorities for everything else. So my question to you, John, John Wahe, is, um, you know, comparing Fox News, comparing Tucker Carlson and, and his friends, um, how do you think the liberal press does better? Um, or are they also behind the eight ball in terms of delivering old-fashioned classical American news? Well, I, I, well, first of all, I think the, the, the liberal liberals in general are, uh, you know, are are too um, they're too careful where they step. I, I don't know how to explain this anymore. They they want to be um, they don't they don't have the same passion that uh, someone on the right well on the right may have for their issue. I mean, and, and this is going to sound kind of wild, but, uh, you know, it, it makes sense. I mean, watch Roe Ro, uh, Ro v. Wade and how the, the populace works out. 
I think that you're going to find that the, the people who think they're saving babies are a little bit more uh, self-righteous and determined to win at any cost than the people who want to save uh, the climate <laughs> or trees or something else. I mean, it, 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 they're incompatible kind of passions. And so I think what, what that means is that on the left, First of all, you start with a disadvantage because you don't necessarily have the same kind of base that gets excited. I think some people on the left are trying to do that. And secondly, I think you always feel guilty when you're too partisan. I mean, you know, we, we, we call the liberal press. CNN is a liberal press. I mean, maybe they're trying to report something as the truth, but they, they go over backwards to make sure that they also say something a little bit on the right. NSNBC tried to be the liberal press, but they don't have the same uh, killer instinct that a Tucker Carlson might have, not, not, you know. And so what you got is you, you got, I think the American media now, you, you have an acknowledgement of that in order to exist as a business, you need to be in the entertainment business. So they have started to become entertainment as well. They're just not as good at it, <laughs> and, you know, period. I mean, they, they're not as good at it. The, the Democratic Party has never been as good at fighting in the trenches, political trenches as- uh, Now this is uh, the problem, uh, isn't it? I mean, I was gonna ask you, you know, what effect does uh, Fox and Carlson have on public opinion? And of course, we know the base will the base will follow them inevitably anyway. But it's the moderates, the middle middle of the rotors. What effect does Fox and Carlson have on them? Are are they gaining ground these days because of the techniques, the passion, what you know, the irrational fear, whatever it is that they use? Are they gaining ground? I mean, not in Hawaii so much, although I think it happens here too. Uh, and I will ask you that in a moment. Um, but what about the, the country in general? Well, I, I think that, first of all, they're doing it in fertile ground, even in Hawaii, even in Hawaii, because anybody upset with government kind of likes that stuff. I mean, uh, you know, and not necessarily everybody listens to Dr. Carlson, but they, there's fertile ground. Last night, I had a, a point, uh, I had a meeting with a friend of mine, very good doctor, very good doctor. And when he's talking medicine, he's... Uh, no, I mean, he's known as being a very good doctor. And right in the middle of all of that, he tells me, you know, I don't listen to the news anymore. And I said, really? And he said, hey, why? Why don't you? you know? He says, well, they're all biased, you know, both sides. I, not even Fox, not even Fox. I won't even. So I said, what do you do? He says, I go to the Internet and then I find the truth. And I said, you got to be joking. And this guy's not talking about, you know, replacement theories or white supremacy and all of that. What he's saying is, I watched the, the news about Ukraine. And do you really know that the Russians are, are there to liberate the people? And I looked at him and I said, you know, in this age of disinformation, when people who, it's gotten so pervasive. You see, I think, uh, Tucker Carlson is a symptom in a sense. I mean, you know, uh, it, th this information has gotten so pervasive in our society that somebody as smart as this guy had to be in order to even get his first degree is telling me that he's listening to uh, going to the internet and seeing these programs with uh, people, uh, with Russians helping the Ukrainians. Yeah, well, and, I, think, and, I think you're, I think you've touched on something very important, and that is there are people right here in Hawaii. We always make this broad assumption that people in Hawaii are liberal um, and they're, you know, they, they're not misinformed. But I think there are a, a fair number of people in Hawaii who are misinformed. They may not be all that vociferous about it, but they're out there on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And you're not the first person who's mentioned this kind of conversation to me about people who you know, will say to them, hey, I can't talk about this in public. But I'll tell you, you know, the Tucker Carlson, he's right, that kind of thing. It's, it's here. It's here in Hawaii. Stephanie, I want, I want to ask you a question. Why does Fox carry Trump's message? 
um, why why did Tucker Carlson have all these telephone calls with the White House on on in the middle of January 6th? What is this the special connection between Fox News and its quote newscasters? Tim would agree disagree with the term newscasters, entertainment casters, right? Um, why why did they have this special relationship with Trump and the White House, and especially on Insurrection Day? What allows them? What makes it possible? What encourages them? What encourages Trump to deal with them in the way they connect? Well, I think there are a couple of factors here, as in anything. Uh, first of all, recall that Rush Limbaugh is gone. All right, Bill O'Reilly is gone. And um, Megan Kelly, for whatever she was a, a major uh, show host, she's gone. So where where where's all that all those that listening audience might be a part of the burgeoning audience of uh, Tucker Carlson since 2020 when he was the most watched show the, before Hannity, but um, yeah it is such it's such a question but he is um, in position because Fox obviously wants him in position and Fox has defended him in court with making statements about what it is that Tucker says is non-liberal commentary. They accept that that's what it is. They accept that and they label it as exaggeration. And they also talk about it being not stating actual facts. So Tucker has pulled in this huge listening audience um, and with all of these other people gone. And he uh, in 2020 became the mouthpiece for that very extreme right side to people who were already true believers. And uh, there he is. So I wanted to also mention that in his history, I mean, it's kind of like Fat Fox is desperate for this guy for some reason, because, you know, he was fired from CNN. He was fired because of a dressing down by Jon Stewart that ended up canceling the firing line show. He's been fired from PBS. And 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 so he's he's got very, very low ratings at, at this pre 2020 Donald Trump affiliation. And he is the most Trumper of the group of them, according to the to Fox News. You know, Stephanie, you make it sound like Fox News is has an equivalency to Russian state TV. What I mean is that Fox News is joined, at least when Trump is in office with the White House, it's joined with government. It speaks the government line, however right or wrong that is. Um, would you would you agree with that comparison, with that equivalency, that uh, that connection? It's similar, is it, with um, with Russian state TV? I certainly agree with that. I think that's a a very good insight and a, a, a an important statement. Um, that that is fact, and I think that all of these techniques, all of this disinformation, all all of this propaganda, and all of the misinformation, and the perseveration and the repetition of all of it, is coming right out of the playbook of uh, the Russians and whoever that is, the Communist Party, the you know, the the Nazis, whatever. They know how to ramp up these influence levers on people. Yeah. That are very powerful. Yeah. 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 Well, I just want to jump onto this this point, uh, Stephanie, and you are making, and that is, you know, we have to remember um, the Murdoch uh, family. They put Fox News on for a reason, and it wasn't for media purposes. It was for political persuasion. So semantics is everything when it comes to how we define what we're watching on Fox, and I'll say it again, entertainment versus Fox News. And, and when we use polite words, of what we see, for example, when we say disinformation, don't we really mean propaganda? And, mm -hmm. and that's the point that we're, Fox is getting ahead on, on um, other talk shows is because they're using quite effective propaganda techniques, but we're, we're, we're failing to recognize it. Well, and certainly know, they're, they're, I, I, they're I, using I, strategies to gain to our emotions and particularly uh, white fear emotions. Don, you had something? Yeah, I, I don't know whether Fox News is doing it for a uh, political persuasion as much as for money. I mean, the uh, in fact, uh, Murdoch's son contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Biden campaign and was on the other side of, of Trump. 
And he has said that my dad can't stand Trump. But the reason why we're doing this is because it brings in bucks. Wow. And so, you know, and, and that's they're doing. I think what the background to some of that that may have been different is even uh, Riley, uh, Bill, uh, you know, the earlier Fox type commentators was try were trying to be uh, news people. You know, they may have been a little bit uh, slanted white left or whatever, but they were trying. I, I don't think there's any pretense in, anymore. And, uh, you know, what I worry about where I think there's been a shift is that at one time, if people heard, you know, 20 years, 25 years ago, if we were in the situation where Russia had just uh, invaded Ukraine. And people listen to some of the stuff Tucker Carlson says, like justifying the invasion because Americans uh, have, uh, uh, you know, get, what do you call that? Uh, the, these laboratories, bio labs, and you, and, you know, which is an obvious lie. I mean, we were there to take down the Russian bio labs, but he says this. I mean, at one time, people would have been howling traitor. You know, this guy is. Uh, a, 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 attacking america mm -hmm. and nowadays we listen to it and we say oh that's freedom of speech which it might be but it's nevertheless as a public figure and you carry russian propaganda on your in, in uh, on your show does it uh, work john is he well, reaching, is he reaching? Working because he, he hasn't been taken off the air but i mean and, and who condemns him every and and i think behind Tucker Carlson and the money and all of this stuff is the existence of Trump. And everybody's so afraid that if they did something and he returns into office, that things might get even worse. So, I, you know, I, I think Tucker Carlson is a symptom of our own sickness. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if Tucker Carlson is gonna run for office one of these days and get Trump's mm -hmm. endorsement, huh? How about that? Okay, Stephanie, I want to ask you a question. <clears throat> you know, lately, in the past uh, week or two, for some reason, uh, maybe it's just um, slow, slow news, or maybe too much news, or uh, you know, a shifting priorities, if you will, in the media. There's been a lot of coverage of this very topic, of of um, you know, uh, of Tucker Carlson uh, and Fox News examining what Tucker Carlson says, uh, bringing on clips of the things he says now that he said before, and, you know, generally kind of an expose, if you will, of what's been going on with Fox News. <clears throat> now, sometimes when people lie and they do things that are destructive to our society, your, your first reaction is not to listen, not to talk, like me. I'm not going to listen to a lie. I turn it off. And so my question to you is, is it healthy? for the, uh, I know it's not the right term, the liberal media to spend so much time covering the right-wing media, uh, or should they rather just ignore them? Like they should be ignoring Trump, for example, like Twitter ignores Trump for now. I certainly agree with that, Jay. I think that that's real good advice for the, for the media. Not not repeat one single word of it. Uh, only to use paraphrase or something that uh, you know might even be a quote of them. But to run their words and to put them up on the screen and give them that credit. It's just the same that policy that we use for serial killers. Right, once they're caught, no picture, no no, no documentation, no manifestos on the front page of the New York Times. So yeah, I think that's a really important to do that because there's only a few i mean there's means of influence for for making people change the way they think and value and 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 pl play by the norms um i think that john y hayes comment about the the people used to be um uh, seeing something like this and call it maybe treason or something of that sort but the people who are watching fox now um um, according to what I've seen lately is they're 80% white 
and they're uh, all you know 52 years older or more so a 55 55 plus group so these are the people that used to call it treason exactly and so it's the question yeah john so yeah, what yeah. and so all of this has done something to them and they've been warmed up by of course rush who's gone and bill o'reilly and other shows like that that no longer play but they were prepared for this over decades to be uh captured by the the hit of a trump man yeah. uh, uh, tim let me go to you on uh, uh the fact that this doesn't happen in a vacuum uh we have tucker carlson we have fox news which is uh you know, tremendously influential. Uh, somebody told me they went into, uh, you know, a small town and, you know, call it the, the town of the last picture show, like in Texas mm -hmm. or any of those red states in there. And they saw everybody sitting around in the barbershop uh, or in the cafe uh, watching Fox News all day long. Nothing else, just Fox News, sort of intravenous Fox News. And I guess the, the question is, um, what about radio, Tim? Uh, we have Sinclair Radio, no relation to Cynthia Sinclair, um, all over the country with virtually hundreds of stations, and they are repeating the same kinds of misinformation. What is the interaction? What is the collective effect of having all this stuff in the barbershop and in the cafe where people are mainlining on not only Fox News, not only Carlson, but on the same kind of information or disinformation uh, in other broadcast media at the same time? Um, my first reaction to your, your, your question is Sinclair Media is the grassroots. It's the local town um, media, if you will, whereas Fox Entertainment is your national. So you got uh, disinformation coming from top to, to middle and from bottom to middle. And, and then, of course, don't, let's not forget the cultural, the cultural flavor that Fox Entertainment brings to his listening audience. There's a cultural appeal. It's not just information or the, you know, uh, disinformation or, or, or uh, opinions that are steeped in uh, misinformation. There's an, a cultural appeal of lifestyle. You know, um, the pill, my pillow guy, uh, Lindell, whatever his name is, and you have all these wackadoodles that actually are appealing to them uh, on a cultural cultural sense. And that's also part of the attraction. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jay, Go ahead, John. Go ahead. To, to add to that, I think part of the cultural appeal, and, and maybe one of the more, to me anyway, one of the dangerous aspects of where we find ourselves is the unification of misinformation and religion. I mean, you know, there's a there's a kind of a a, 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 a revival of Christian of Christian uh, uh, I guess you would call it uh, Christian Christianity that uh, ties itself to a lot of these things and it's justified uh, biblically in some cases. Mm -hmm. That the, what they you know I mean they, they are the apocalyptic and uh, aspects of of some of the uh, you know some religious uh, denominations that are what was his name I'm trying to remember was it Pat Paul somebody just came out and predicted the, that all of this was has been biblically foretold and it's all going all going to happen but the cultural the cultural values, which we, we, we call cultural in, in a sense, I think, to avoid calling it what it is, which is uh, some uh, religious base, <laughs> like abortion, like uh, the reaction against mm -hmm. gays marrying, the, the, mm -hmm. the idea that uh, a Western civilization, i.e. Anglo-Saxon Western civilization, brought Christianity and the rest to the world, uh, and and this, it, all of these things have a base that uh, that maybe uh, none of us, if we thought about it, would necessarily agree with. But it is passionately involved with people. And one of the most interesting things was the fact that people tie their religion to some of their politics. But if you ask them, have you ever actually read the Bible? No. <laughs> you know, I mean, but we this is what we believe. John, while you're, while you're on the witness stand, uh, I would like to ask you about the First Amendment. 
because if I if I give you if I give you one um, voice in the conversation telling the truth, and I give you another that is distracting us all with disinformation and misinformation, and the government supports that, uh, and it has under Trump, it did. Um, then I'm effectively depriving you, depriving depriving the press of um, a, a free and fair information, of accurate information. If I lie or encourage other, if I am the government and I lie and I encourage other people to lie, am I not depriving you of First Amendment rights? Yeah, I think you can look at it that way. But, uh, you know, the traditional, the traditional way of looking at the First Amendment was that it was, unless you're a guy standing on a, uh, uh, on a, um, ladder in the middle of a town square shouting out whatever you believe there was there's never been a situation where the first amendment was absent i mean you get a government license to operate a business and you're supposed to operate within uh, certain types of parameters and that's what i think we have drifted away from legally i mean i hear people say well, you know, it's a, it's not an incitement to uh, to riot. It's a First Amendment right. It never it's never was, but under the new situation, the new Supreme Court, it might become. So this this information sponsored by government, which is what you're pointing out, because every one of these TV stations have gotten licenses from the government. They've gotten all kind of uh, support indirectly in and they never and in the past in order to avoid uh regulation the, these institutions would pledge themselves to have some kind of code of honor and they would try their best to be uh, uh you know be be more moderate now what is the First Amendment and how does it play? Can I have, do I have the right to tell a lie if it makes money to me, even if it hurts my country? I mean, that's the question that's- Do we need regulation, up. John? Well, I think you need something. I don't know if you need regulation, but I think you need something. On the other hand, you know, um, it's like, the, okay, let's, let's take, it's like uh, gay marriage, for example, right? I mean, this is where it gets, because the other part of the First Amendment is also the right to practice uh, your, your religious belief. And so you would, uh, I mean, I would be absolutely uh, in favor of a religious denomination saying that I won't marry anybody uh, that of the same sex in my, in my church. And that's, to me, that's fine. That's religious freedom. I don't like it, but that's religious freedom. On the other hand, I think you draw the line where you say, I don't want anybody to marry anybody in any church. And you see, that's what we're getting into, uh, I think in this day and age, and that's the shift because all of a sudden stopping anybody from doing something becomes religious because my particular belief is a religious one. Yeah. So the same thing happens with, with, with when you're uh, with speech. My particular speech is my speech. I ought to be free. It ought to be so. So it's possible for a president of the United States who took an oath of office to uphold an institution to say, I can say what I like. No, you can't. Well, that's, you know, uh, Stephanie, let me put this to you. If I if I if I find my media is loaded with lies, and it confuses and distracts and misinforms the public, don't I need to regulate that? And if I do, you know, obviously that is that is changing the depth and breadth of the First Amendment. So lying actually has an effect of calling for regulation, and that regulation would be. A limitation of the First Amendment. Isn't that where, where we're going? Well, aren't we sort of there? I mean, isn't it? Um, isn't there a regulation or a law about if you're in the theater and you scream fire just for the fun of it, and everybody goes nuts and gets killed and all of that? So, I mean, I think that, that was in a, in a, an opinion in the Supreme Court by Justice Black. 
there you go. Okay, so 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 what are we going to have to do more of that? Then doesn't that erode the notions of uh, of America and its free speech? So I mean, I thought it was not to hurt some if it doesn't hurt someone else. But is that relying on norms that you would know better than to shout that in a situation or you know put people in jeopardy for fun by saying something that would cause them to hurt themselves? I mean, there must be case law on that. But I don't know, Jay, it's a really good question. I think the limits are being tested by these people like Trump and Carlson and Fox. Yeah, well, Tim, let me ask you, you know, you, call it, you don't call it news, you call it um, entertainment. Um, and I, and you've, you've opined in the past uh, that we really do need regulation. What, what's your view of whether we need regulation, the extent of the regulation, who does the regulation, and what effect that will have on the First Amendment? Mm -hmm. Well, you have the FCC that's been doing it since the invention of television. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason we don't have it for cable and, and social media is because they're outside the boundaries of those licenses. Uh, but they're still affecting the public. It's still an issue of, 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 of presenting information for the public good. So they ought to be regulated. And again, I've said it a hundred times and in a hundred different ways is that we need a firewall between the news reporting and commentary. And I don't care if it's a separate desk. I don't care if it's a label above the head and below the chin saying editorial commentary, like we used to do back in the 60s when Walter Cronkite would go from the news desk, literally went to a different desk, and it said editorial. Yeah. Um, you know, those were the days of the 60s where the <laughs> FCC said, you're no longer reporting news, you're, 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 you're committing commentary. Oh, we've, it's, we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> That's right. Now you, and Absolutely. now people can't distinguish between the two. But let me take a, a little 20,000 uh, foot view of how we got to this place. Um, you know, if you really think about it, it was Ronald Reagan in 1980 that embraced Jerry Falwell and the moral majority. And how that he let the you know that the, the the nose of the camel in the tent to say let's let's um, mix government with religion, and let's you know let me number one get voters my way, but two let that influence policy and politics. And forty years later, here we are, where you know half our Supreme Court probably had to pass pass a religious litmus test before they were nominated or or selected to be nominated. So you know. I think we're moving towards a theocracy, which we discussed yesterday, and that certainly has an influence on how SCOTUS is reviewing uh, the reversal of Roe v. v. Roe v. Wade. And we keep moving to a theocracy versus our republic. Yeah, you remember, for example, in, in the way that tax law is structured, is that uh, churches get a complete exemption from real property tax, from income tax, from everything. And the deal is, or at least it was, mm -hmm. is that they stay out of politics. Correct. We'll give you the break, just stay out of politics. And now they get the tax break, but they don't stay out of politics. They're completely invested in politics and they have a huge effect. We're almost out of time and I wanna go around Robin. Um, and let me, let me start with you, um, you know, Stephanie. Uh, what effect is all this going to happen, uh, have on the uh, elections that are coming? Uh, we have an election that's already started in terms of uh, some states. And, primaries that we have one in in Hawaii, although I don't think it affects Hawaii very much. But, um, you know, we worry about the elections this fall. How worried are you that Tucker Carlson and the conservative media are, are going to disinform people or misinform them to the point where they can't be, um, you know, do critical thinking for for to, to perform their obligations as citizen voters? Uh, yes, I, I, I'm pessimistic. Um, I also wanted to point out that almost all of our top leaders are Catholic, okay, with the exception of a Jewish person on the Supreme Court. Um, I think that almost all of them, that's Pelosi and the rest. Okay, so I, that's an important point. And um, when it gets down to um, the Roe v. Wade, it is the fact that there is this what collect, co intersection of religion and government always because abortion is um, with, within the um, religious uh, tenets in the Bible. It's not something that came out of uh, civil society. Anyway, the point is that uh, uh, there's so many of these influences moving in a direction away from what I think, uh, 
am I normal or I, I, what the norms and values are for being an American, you know, out of the 20th century of, you know, educated out of through that. But I, those norms and values are shifting so far that it's hard to to, to have faith that we're going to get things to happen in the way we can reasonably expect them to. John why hey, let me yeah. ask you the same question. Um, you follow yeah. politics, you follow politics here, obviously, but you also follow national politics. I know that. And I'm very interested to know how you feel about the effect of this, um, you know, conservative press, Fox News, Tucker Carlson, uh, Sinclair Radio and the like pumping out disinformation, uh, 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 pumping out uh, conspiracy uh, lies. What effect are they going to have on the election? Well, I think they'll have an effect, and they'll have an effect even in Hawaii, but not necessarily the way people might see it. I mean, I don't think people in Hawaii are going to suddenly become uh, patriots or, uh, or whatever those organizations are called. But on the other hand, you know, people's behavior is dictated, in my opinion, by permission. And when people behave as badly as they feel that they get permission for their action. And so when you see all of this stuff happening on the mainland, then you, you seem to feel that you got permission to act similarly, although with maybe different issues or sound or different uh, uh, kinds, of, uh, kinds of tactics, but you got the permission. So all of a sudden, I think you're going to see people here thinking they're telling lies, for example, or, or doing things that are uh, tainted is, uh, is okay. And I, I think you see that happening now in the normal course of government. I mean, our government today does things that would have been unthinkable prior to Trump. I mean, look at, you know, there's a certain kind of arrogance that came with Trump that I don't think uh, only stayed on the continent. Yeah, it, it anyway, pervades our society. I think. I, think, I think that what this, all of this does is when, is we, we you may not find uh, uh, somebody doing really right wing things, but you can find somebody on the internet doing things that are just as bad uh, uh, because they think they now have permission. And it also seems to pay off. Yeah. I mean, my doctor wasn't listening to Tyler, I mean, uh, to Carlson. What he was doing was demonstrating to me that he's very fertile ground for that kind of stuff. Yeah. And he's an intelligent guy. I mean, I, I trust him with my life, you know, and here he is. That's scary. Uh, Tim, you're the last, uh, the last man, the last co-host, uh, the last speaker on this, and it's your <laughs> job to summarize our entire discussion and give us a a profound takeaway from everything that has been mentioned in this this very uh, diverse uh, set of set of points today. Hey, no pressure. Thanks, Jay. Uh, I'm not going to summarize everything we discussed about. I'm going to I'm going to uh, tag onto what John just said. And it's a critical point, and that is people act badly when they're given permission. And that's why it's absolutely paramount that we select leaders of this country that are both ethical and moral in their, in their, you know, in their character and their behavior and in their personal life. And you look at the difference between Obama and Biden versus Trump, um, we have ethical leaders versus horrible non-ethical leader. And that gave people permission to act badly and then copycat those behaviors. Uh, let's go back to looking at the, the ethical litmus test before we, we nominate a president for a particular party and elect them our leader uh, moving forward. So John, thank you for that, that point about permission because it's, it's a critical point. Okay, and I'll, I'll say this. Um, what, we've, what we've discussed and learned today is the system she is broken. Um, we have we have a media that does actively misinform and disinform us. Um, we have a government that does not stop them from doing that. We have a Supreme Court that we cannot rely on. We cannot trust uh, to um, you know do the right thing, uh, whether it's on one side or the other. Uh, no no further trust because they've been politicized. And I guess the only thing we can do, ladies and gentlemen, is we can keep on broadcasting our thoughts, our conversations uh, here on American issues, take one and take two every Wednesday and Thursday. That is our 
duty, our obligation, and our privilege. Thank you so much, John Wyhey, uh, Stephanie uh, Stoll Dalton, and uh, my co host, Tim Apicella. Thank you very much. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.